And Alistair Loftus here is the author of a brand new book. His first book, it's called The Battle Within. Uh, Alistair, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. You, okay, 20 years with Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. That's right. Okay, so what made you decide to, uh, to serve uh, all these years back? Get, in, get into the armed forces. Oh, get into the military? Yes. Well, uh, the military has a wonderful program to pay for school. So when I finished uh, high school, I uh, was looking for also to get an education, but also for some, uh, you know, uh, for some adventure. The military was a good mix for yeah. me. Uh, and so I went uh, to Royal Military College of Canada and, uh, and then ended up serving uh, after that. Okay. And you've definitely had some adventures along the way. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, tell us, so you've served overseas, Afghanistan? That's right. Most of my operational experience is in Afghanistan. Uh, when, I finished, uh, when I finished school, I got to 3rd uh, Battalion of the Princess Patricia's in Edmonton in 2000. And then in 2001, 9-11 happened. And then uh, my battalion was the one that deployed. So I deployed to Afghanistan in 2002. Uh, I was in Afghanistan again, uh, 2005, 2006, 2008, and then uh, on the final combat mission in 2011. Okay, so we see a photo of you right there. When exactly <laughs> would that? Yeah. These photos so these taken? photos, these photos are from 2002, uh, from the first deployment to Afghanistan. Uh, so it's quite hard there in terms of you could see on the previous one we were living in uh, in tents and uh, it was quite uh, quite austere and quite rough yeah. uh, and same with this one you can see the uh, the green uniforms that we had mm -hmm. we deployed so quickly that uh, they didn't they hadn't brought in the tan uniforms yet uh, this is actually a crashed uh, aircraft site that we were sent in to secure uh, for an investigation so and you can see all the that's me with uh, all the gear on my back and uh, talking to, uh, to my higher headquarters in terms yeah. of what's going on with the site all right so We've decided to write this book, The Battle Within. When did you decide to, to put this together? Really, the inspiration came over a series of years. Uh, as I said, I, I did have a lot of time seeing Afghanistan. And one of the things I've noticed over the, the, uh, the evolution, so to speak, of the deployment is uh, the rise in numbers of post-traumatic stress, of mental health injuries, and, and of course, of uh, suicides. Now, I don't have post-traumatic stress myself, but certainly uh, I've been exposed to a number of events that uh, did uh, generate some post-traumatic stress by some soldiers, and I thought I had something to add to the discussion. Okay. Um, and so when I had some time over the last few years, I decided to put it together, and that ended up being the book. Okay, so for those who don't know what uh, well, post-PSTD uh, is? Yep, sure, post PTSD. Traumatic. Okay, maybe you could explain <laughs> it a little better for us then, obviously. Sure, okay. Having, having dealt with a lot of probably colleagues okay. and... So uh, technically the definition, uh, or one definition, is the persistence of stress-induced symptoms long after being exposed to a traumatic event. Mm -hmm. So it's a mouthful. Uh, really, I, I think if we look at it, uh, in our lives from time to time we're exposed to events that overwhelm us, either because they're uh, fear-inducing or they make us feel powerless, or because they, they're something that, we, that strikes us as morally wrong. Uh, our bodies naturally prepare us to deal with that. It's a stress-induced reaction, fight or flight. Um, and so we, we mobilize our body uh, and are able to deal with those situations. Typically what happens is when we're out of that situation, our bodies return to normal. But in some cases, the symptoms persist and won't go away, um, whether that's hypervigilance, um, memories. And in some cases, they can come back after a series of time. So that's really what post-traumatic stress is. is those symptoms don't uh, normalize over time. And they, the, the person stays uh, in that uh, state of kind of okay. hypervigilance. Okay, so your main character is Major Hugh Degari? Yep. Okay, so, so is, he a, is he a real person? He's not. He's no, not a real person. No, everyone in the novel is, uh, is fictional. Okay. Um, now tell us a bit about Major, Major Degari. Okay, so Major Hugh uh, Degari is really, he's a compilation, I guess, of a number of, of different people. And what I wanted to do was show really what I, I would consider a role model soldier. Uh, and then demonstrate that that soldier is susceptible to post-traumatic stress as well. So he has an infantry background, uh, has a number of deployments uh, in Bosnia and then in Afghanistan as well. Uh, and, and so he's very familiar with being on the front line, so to speak. And then he ends up being in a headquarters position, so a desk position. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what's supposed to be a period of reduced tempo for him ends up being a very stressful event for him because he has a chance to, to think and then th these memories start to come back. And, uh, and so he ends up struggling with post-traumatic stress. Uh, and that, that's where the novel really kicks off. Okay. Why is it so important to bring light to uh, uh, PTSD? Well, there's a number of reasons why. I think even there's been a lot of great work with treatment for post-traumatic stress over the past, uh, certainly over the past decade. 
Uh, but there's still some misconceptions and uh, confusion about what it is. And that results in a lot of silence. And one thing that we see, I think, is that uh, people who suffer from post-traumatic stress often stay silent um, mm -hmm. and don't seek treatment when they perhaps, you know, as early as they could. And there's re a number of reasons why they might do that, um, either to avoid the stigma, perhaps, uh, to, or to avoid what they think might be negative repercussions at work. Uh, so what happens, though, is if they delay seeking treatment, like all injuries, the longer you leave it, the harder they are to treat and the more or the less likely it is that there will be a full recovery uh, afterwards. And then on the flip side, it's also important, important sorry, for support networks. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, you know, where it's easy, if you had, a, say, a broken arm, it'd be easy for me to say, you know, I, th I think there's something wrong with your arm. And we know generally how to, how to help someone, you know, uh, go get some help. Yeah. It's a little more difficult for mental health injuries, which by their nature are invisible. They're still injuries regardless, but it's, it's cueing people in and uh, exposing them and educating them to what the symptoms are so that they can uh, know when something's wrong in a, in a friend or a loved one and then be able to get them the help that they need okay. or, or turn them to resources. So where are some resources then in the nation's capital area? There's actually one of the things that's happened over the past decade is a lot of good resources have come online. Um, and there's a spectrum of care right from uh, crisis hotlines. Uh, so Veterans Affairs has a crisis, crisis hotline. Uh, the Canadian Forces has the Member Assistance Program. It's a crisis hotline. And that's really for people who, you know, they're going through a traumatic event right now and they need to reach out to someone. Okay. Uh, there's also some on the, on the farther spectrum, and we look at more detailed programming. Uh, on the government side, um, uh, programs like Soldier On, which helps uh, people deal with injuries through sport mm -hmm. or support our troops. And then there's other ones, Wounded Warriors Canada, uh, Vets Canada. There's a number of ones that provide a spectrum of different programming. Okay, perfect books uh, on Elgin. That's right. Uh, so this upcoming Saturday from 2 to 4, you're going you're to be having like a book, a reading and, and, and signing. That's right, yeah. I'll read a little section out of the book and then, uh, and then I'll do some signing afterwards. Thank you very much. Congratulations on your first book. Thank you. It's called The Battle Within and Alistair Luft is the author. Thanks for being here. We've got more daytime coming up in moments.